So what is the bluff wizard bluffing about? It's bluffing about being a wizard. We may not win today, gentlemen, but we'll have a good time. <laughs> So I'll be surprised if a lot of people haven't read this or seen this somewhere or heard of it. Um, but I've seen some funny articles and things. I don't know if I've seen a video about it. I'll kind of look around. If there's something, a, a main, a good representation of it, I'll try to put it in the description. But I've seen people theorize that Gandalf is not really a wizard. He's act actually just an epic level fighter uh, with a good enough intelligence or some, some very minimal... Uh, wizard skills and spells or even just like cantrips um, and he's actually just tricking people to get into melee with him like in the movies you see him fighting with staff and a sword and he never really does any great magical things like you would expect from a wizard at least in a D&D sense and I thought that was such a fun a fun idea I think I think it's something that's definitely a, um, a decent build with some really good role playing opportunities to it um, but first off, I would say this is definitely a build, um, although you're going to be deceptive, you're going to be bluffing. Remember who you're bluffing. You should be bluffing the enemies in the game that you're actually, actually a wizard when you're not. I don't think it's going to work out too well if you're trying to bluff the other players at the table that you're not that you're a wizard when you actually aren't but it would be fine to to bluff the other players characters but I would, if you're gonna have fun with that role-playing opportunity you gotta just I think get it out there with like the DM and the other players hey I saw this article or read this thing or have this idea that I want to play a character who looks like a wizard but isn't really because that's gonna give them some opportunities to kind of play along with it it's gonna give your DM some opportunities to play along with it too um, and I think it's just good to kind of keep in mind because if you try to run this holding that as a secret I think it's going to fall apart pretty quick and it's not going to be as much fun as you can just role playing with everybody kind of knowing that's what you're role playing so that's what I would recommend I'm, I'm, there may be some other good ways to kind of kind of do it or different angles to come by but I think by and large that's the way that I would recommend doing it so just have a good this is great for like session zero right you just really talk about it talk it out you know how you're gonna work this out um like for your dm you know is it gonna always be like a deception check to get enemies to to trick them that kind of thing um or are there other party members that can take some actions or do some things when combat is kicking off that could maybe give you advantage on that roll or something like that or are they just going to kind of roll with it and not worry about not bog down the game with checks i think that's all really good to talk about before you start kind of playing this kind of character but if you do I think there's a lot of fun to be had <laughs> and uh, I think that um, the article that I, I read I think says you know Gandalf is really just a, a fighter they reference some feats I think that they're 3.5 edition feats or that kind of thing um, I could be wrong but it seems like they're talking about previous edition feats and I think you could probably go just about any melee class that you want pretending to be the wizard but I do think there's a, a really fun opportunity to go monk with it um, you can almost picture uh, the the wise old sage wizard the, the Gandalf long beard that kind of thing and you can almost picture a, a very similar uh, monk uh, a wise monk uh, meditates he's He's old, but he's he's still agile. He's highly trained. He's honed his body over all these years, and he's just absolutely a master. Like if you could fuse Gandalf and Miyagi together, <laughs> you'd get something in the middle. And they both could be this kind of older figure wearing robes. There's some similarities enough that I think it might be a good way to hide that or to fuse those classes together. Um, and if you can trick your enemies to come into melee range with you thinking you're a wizard and you're actually a monk I think you can wreck house so let's take a look at uh, how we could put this together the first thing that I think you need to decide is are you going to actually take like a level or two of wizard and 
uh, use some of the first level spells or cantrips to kind of help accentuate the ruse? Or are you going to take no levels and just really try to bluff your way into looking like a wizard when you're not? Um, you know, if you do take a, a, a level in wizard, one or two, I don't, I think for the fun of this, I wouldn't take more than two. If you really like an arcane tradition or you really want that one extra spell slot um, to, to use in certain situations, go for it. Um, but I don't see going a whole lot more because then you're just going to be missing out what you're really trying to do with the character. Um, but as far as cantrips, right, um, prestidigitation can take you a long way. Uh, minor illusion can take you a long way as far as trying to bluff your way looking like a wizard. <laughs> I guess make sure you have a pretty decent, you're either skilled or you have a pretty decent charisma um, to pull off some deception checks with the <laughs> prestidigitation and minor illusion. Um, and you know, maybe you even just go with a, um, a feat. I think you can pick up uh, pick up cantrips with a feat, that magic initiate, does that in include cantrips? Yeah, yeah, magic initiate. You can pick two cantrips. Those are your two. Prestidigitation and minor illusion. I think you can go a long way with that. Um, and then you don't really dip into uh, any wizard levels at all. Um, maybe you kind of studied one from the shadows, but you never really got into a, a a mage's college or anything like that to do any formal study or you got your hands on some uh, cantrip scrolls or, or a single spell scroll somehow and you just studied them enough to kind of figure figure them out um, there's a lot of ways to kind of roll it but you could do it with just magic initiate or you could take a couple levels a level or two and um, if you so if like I said if you do I would take those would be the two cantrips right prestidigitation minor illusion the sky's the limit. Your imagination is the only thing in your way. Um, as far as spells that you might want to take as first level spells from the wizard, what would be awesome? It, it's really tempting to take a, a, a closer range spell to be able to use them when somebody's up closer to you, but Again, I think that's kind of, oh, it's tempting, but I think it's kind of defeating what you really want to pull off with this character. So like a Burning Hands, you know, mm, I don't know. You, I think it's better to just be really good with your weapon um, than to limit yourself kind of in that way. But something like Disguise Self, if you, if you want to make it look like you're this old, decrepit wizard, you know, who's wise, but his body is frail to lure someone in. Um, that would be kind of cool. And some utility things might not be bad, right? Like if you have identify and you're, you're kind of role playing that this is a ruse and you, um, can identify magical objects for people, you, you know, in your party, you kind of, hmm, you brood over them and you figure out and you explain their magical properties to them. They're going to think the, the characters in the game are going to think that you're a good wizard. Um, so that may be a good option. Um, and maybe, maybe mage armor if you want. But remember, I think if you calculate your AC in two different ways, you just take the best. So you may be better off just taking the monk's unarmored defense thing. I think so. Um, so that one may be tempting too. Maybe you want that as a little little boost early on until you can get that little better AC. But I don't know if that one would be so great. Shield seems like a hot commodity, right? Like that's going to always be really useful. Five tier AC. Um, that's going to be a big a big boost and scale really well with your level. So I would maybe strongly recommend that. You know, silent image is maybe another good a good spell that you could make uh, use of. You're kind of faking. You could pretty much fake a whole bunch of spells as long as you know Silent Image and, or the Minor Illusion Prestidigitation stuff. Um, and I think those are the ones that kind of really stand out. Um, maybe Detect Magic again. 
in the same vein as the identify if you're always like detecting magic but you just pretend like you're really reserved with actually casting spells um, that could be some of the role playing you could do <laughs> with, with fooling the other characters that kind of thing um, so I think there are some good ones but I don't think it's worth trying to level up enough to get into second third level spells just make make the most out of those first level spells and the cantrips I think that is the way to go but here's the thing you're going to fool some baddies into coming up close to you and what are you really I'd say have some fun with a monk. There's a lot of other ways that you could do this. So if you have another uh, a good content, I'm just going to kind of look in the PHB for this. So if you've got some either kind of monk subclasses or you think another uh, melee class would be an awesome thing to do for melee if you're going to lure the baddies in, um, talk about them in the comments. Maybe let some other people know or give me some, some of your good ideas that you think are really good. But uh, I just kind of picked one that really felt like a good flavor to me. So let's take a look at the monk. Yeah, here you go. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of the pieces to this puzzle just from the general monk features. So it really is kind of open for you to pick what monastic uh, tradition you want. Um, unarmored defense again, you'll be able to really get up there without having to actually wear any armor or kind of uh, any kind of giveaways in that regard. Um, your martial arts stuff, I think that, uh, doesn't a quarter staff, quarter staff counts, which is another thing why I think this is kind of perfect. You can be that wizard with a staff, but a monk and a staff is also just the perfect, uh, perfect disguise. Cause it's going to be a lot, they're going to use a lot of the same things or look similar in some ways. Um, so you could go with a staff. Um. And let's see, so Flurry of Blows, you can really crank out the hits. Um, and you can, uh, you can, you can do a lot of things with the key points, right? Patient defense. Um, unarmored movement is going to be sweet. So once they're kind of closing the distance on you, if you take one down, you can kind of move on to the next. You can really kind of move around. You're pretty agile in combat. That's pretty nice. Deflect missiles is kind of obviously cool. Um, extra attack, that's that's always good. Stunning strike. <laughs> how, how awesome is this? Starting at 5th level, you can interfere with the flow of key in an opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to attempt a stunning strike. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Um... The awesome thing about this is it says when you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can stun them like this. And you kind of think for a second, oh, well, I'll be cranking people with my staff. Um, so they'll come up and they, they might get an attack on me and that'll be my turn. And then I could stun them. I can kind of maybe keep them stun locked, that kind of thing. Um, if you do go with the quarter staff, there's a wonderful feat where we can play a, a beautiful trick with, with this monk feature as well. So let's take a peek at this feat. The feat is called Polearm Master. And so the weapons that this works with are like the glaive, the halberd, or the quarterstaff. And you can use a bonus action um, on your turn when you attack. You can use a bonus action to make a melee attack with the opposite end of the weapon. This attack uses the same ability modifier as the primary attack. So once you get to where that you have that extra attack, you can go attack, attack, and bonus a, a third one. You don't have to do, do the flurry of blows thing. That obviously has its place for sure. Um, but you get three instead of four. You know, if you're... Um, if you don't, if you want to save the key points, right? You're kind of that's pretty good, three instead of four. But 
the other thing is this is the kicker while you are wielding a glaive halberd pike or quarterstaff other creatures provoke an opportunity attack from you when they enter the reach you have with that weapon so you can fool them into getting up close to you they'll provoke an opportunity attack from you entering your reach if you can connect you could stun them and then they're just sitting there in front of you when your full turn comes around uh, it just feels like a thing of beauty it would be so much fun to pull that off um, and then of course there's a lot of uh, comedic value if you don't pull it off uh, sometimes the fails and the mishaps are, are just as fun for like a role-playing experience um, but what a fun combo everything just kind of comes together the stars align you use the quarter staff to make it look like you're uh, a wizard but you're actually a monk you can you can do you can do all the melee stuff there and then as you fool them as they come come close close in on you you smack them with the quarter staff and stun them and then just beat their brains out on your turn <laughs> so i think that whole concept that's why i kind of like the monk here i'm just getting such a, a flavor from doing this with a monk um as your class but um i just love it <laughs> What else can you do as you, you know, there's a lot of cool ways you can, you can add flavor to some of these monk things too, like evasion, seventh level, you know, when you, you can save, everybody knows that, you can save for half or save for none, and what if, while you're doing that, if you add the flavor of like, you, you are, you make it look like you're channeling your power through your staff to deflect a spell or something like that, um, that could be a fun way to, um, you know, to flavor that one. Same thing with stillness of mind, right? You can end a charm or frightened effect on yourself. You can make it look like it's your power as a wizard, just overcoming something, some other spell or something. Slow fall. You can make it look like feather fall. There's so so much potential. I feel like here. I guess there's something to be said for each of the monastic traditions. You can go with whatever whatever floats your boat um, like I said I think you get all the pieces that, to the puzzle that you need here just from just from your main monk features um, if you did go with a couple of levels in wizard I think the things that really stand out would be maybe divination because at second level you could take portent and then you've kind of got some ways to help mitigate bad luck or some getting they maybe you kind of know you have a hit uh if you have a good enough roll you think you're probably going to land a hit with um when somebody provokes that opportunity attack from you that can be kind of nice where if you um you know if you really need it you kind of know you got one in the bag to use um or those fails the lower rolls or, or crit fail are great for when you might be taking attacks in melee so portent is one of those things that I think kind of scales pretty well. It's helpful when you're low level. It's helpful when you're high level too. And then the other obvious one is illusion. Um, your second level thing is uh, improved minor illusion. That's just going to really help you make the case <laughs> for looking like you're a wizard. Um, you know, when you cast minor illusion, you can create both a sound and an image with a single casting of the spell. That's going to really help you look like you're, you're putting on spells that you don't really know. So, there you go. And the background for this kind of thing, right? Like, um, you know, is it that you always wanted to be a wizard, but you never got accepted into a college to really study those arts, so you're kind of faking it, but through adventuring and experience, you've kind of developed your martial prowess, and you've kind of learned these these monk features that kind of thing is that how it is or is it that you started out actually studying as a wizard and you just didn't see it through you kind of gave up on it um, it was too tough to study the spells and to master the spells so you learned a few really easy ones and then you just 
trained with the staff, that kind of thing. Um, there's some fun fun ways I think to tinker around with the background. Like, how did you come to to this situation where you want to make it look like you're a wizard, but you're not really a wizard? Um, if you've got some good ideas for that, those are a couple that kind of come to my mind. If you've got some other good ideas, again, maybe let people know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear them. I always love thinking of like really cool um, character builds. I love builds that are pretty competent, maybe not like extremely min-maxed, but pretty competent, pretty capable. You can actually play the game and survive some combat or kind of do well in a dungeon kind of thing. But that have just a, mm, a baked in really good flavor for for the role-playing element stuff too. So let me know if you got some good ideas for that. Um, there you go. That one's it's a little bit shorter. There's It's kind of real simple, nothing, nothing to it, but to do it. So let me know what you think and uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.